Hello and welcome to the Papre.com. You're on the breakdown with Paul Toya and myself, Shanaka. We're going to be looking at the last four games in the uh, Dialogue Rugby A Division Championship over the weekend. And we had some interesting matchups. And uh, the biggest one of them, of course, was Candy versus Havelocks up in Nithavala. But we'll talk about another derby game first, uh, Paul. CR versus CH. This used to be the most looked forward to game back in the uh, early 90s or so, and maybe even later on. Uh, towards the uh, late 90s as well, but now it became a bit of a one-sided, um, one-sided affair because CH have obviously lost a lot of their uh, structure in in the in the rugby scene. But 13 points they managed to score to 83 from CRNFC. It was a proper route uh, on the day. It was a proper route. The um, defensive line from CH looked all over the place. Their ruck defence was poor, so. Um the nine for CR was just flooding straight through that area. Um, when they spread it wide, there was no defence out there. Um, but somehow they managed to score 13 points as well. Um, so really it's difficult to see how well um, CR played because it was almost like a training run. 83 points in 80 minutes is, is uh, almost, almost, that's almost no opposition really. Um, CH probably could have actually held tackle bags and just sort of bumped them off and that sort of stuff. But that's a bit harsh, but I think they need to really have a um, good look at themselves and see if they're, um, if they're going to come back with anything in the second round. It just shows really that um, teams really need to have a good pre-season. It looks like they're like seven weeks behind everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll need to make sure they work on that before um, the next round and also before next season as well. And for Sia, probably good to see Anurad Herat back and he scored a hat-trick as well and a couple of tries also for uh, Sashan Mohammed, Tariq Sali opened the scoring, Kamindu De Costa, uh, Shamal Virasekara, good to see him in the number seven uh, shirt as well. Shane Samad, the Perimada skipper scoring. Nalin Kumara came off the bench with two tries and uh, Charana Sendanayaka as well. Prince Chamra had a good game at the back with seven conversions, De Costa, Kumara and Lakshan also with the conversion each. And for CH, Thivanka Bandara and Kasun Srinath, uh, scoring two tries and wish for Dinet uh, putting over one penalty. And CR will be disappointed that they didn't leave a clean sheet on that day. I'd say so, yeah. Um, you've got to look at things where you can improve every single game. And so their defence will need to be tidied up. Probably their open side flanker, I thought he had a great game and so did their, um, their number eight. But um, he needs to run with the ball in two hands so he's a little bit more deceptive. And when he, go, when he reaches a defender, um, the defender no, doesn't know whether he's going to pass or, or whether he's going to um, continue to run. And also it means that as, when he offloads and he's got two hands on the ball, he, it's, it's a much more secure offload. Yeah, that's uh, CR going into the next round with uh, plenty, of, uh, plenty of promise. But let's see whether they can deliver on that second half. Uh, surge took Navy to a hard-fought win against the Air Force. It was 5-3 at halftime. Paul to Navy and finished up 22-8, but it was 22-3 almost uh, at the end of that game. And uh, Air Force, just not enough experience, just not enough firepower against a very well-drilled Navy side. Yeah, look, um, Navy are really good. There's no way you can get around that. Um, I thought Navy probably, they weren't patient enough with the ball. Um, there are lots of half breaks and then uh, pushed passes and 50-50 balls that were passed that weren't really needed to be passed. Um, they just need to hold on to the ball a little bit longer and then um, go through the phases. They actually could have run away with this game. Um, they would be disappointed with conceding late on. They need to make sure that they concentrate right to the end. That's, a, that's an area the coach will want to fix up. For Air Force, I thought um, they looked a bit unsettled in the, in the backs. Every time they tried to put it out through their hands, um, there were just errors, handling errors, um, mistakes, people running wrong lines. It, they just didn't look like they were on their game and probably showed in the scoreboard at the end. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a, of a step too far for them because they've had some really good games in this first round, of course, notably the scalp of uh, Candy. Uh, let's talk about Army and uh, Police as well. The uh, two forces teams going up against each other at the Police Park uh, grounds. Player of the match was Mohamed Rizif Army, really influential number nine. He is, man, that match finished 27-24 in favour of the visitors. A really close game once again. Uh, Paul Army leading comfortably 20 points to seven at half time, but they allowed Police back in the game. They did allow Police back in the game, and Police really let the game get away from them in the beginning, in the first half. They, um, their defence still needs so much more work. They out wide, they drift too early, they sort of give it away and um, they have players, like they, at one point they had three or four players pushing wide to cover one man and then opened up a huge gap straight through the middle and that player scored. Um, or else they didn't number up and then they had, they were 
held short on the, on the outside. Um, their ruck defence needs some work as well, so defensively police really put themselves behind the eight ball in the first half. But they came back well, they showed good spirit, so there's something to work with there. Yeah, they are really uh, showing that they can do something with the few resources that they have. There are a few players who are trying really hard as well. But for Army, it was a welcome win, uh, Paul. And uh, this is something that's going to help them in the second round to be able to come through a close win like that. Yeah, they need their confidence to be pumped up a little bit. Um, they've been on the end of a couple of one-point um, losses. So this one will be good for them. But I thought their forwards played really well. And they're, they're nine... Um, he controlled the match really well and, and just kept the ball in front of them. They just need to control the game and the tempo of the game once they get in front and uh, they should be all right in the second round. And uh, then, of course, we come uh, to the big one. But first, we'll uh, run through the scorers. Police uh, Sports Club, seven points through a try from Rajas Sanzoni, one try from uh, Mohamed Absal, and uh, one penalty try as well for their 24. Sanzoni knocking over two conversions and a penalty. And Army, uh, Pradeep Victor, Vinod Kumar, Mohamed Rizvi, Niroshan Dilipa scoring the tries for them. Salinda with two conversions and one penalty knocked over by Shanaka Kumara. And uh, then... Uh, Candy were entertaining Havelocks. The unbeaten Havelocks team were hoping that they can get and take Candy's scalp in Nithavala. Candy haven't lost in Nithavala for a long while. And you can see why, Paul, because it's kind of a fortress for them. And uh, it's almost a 16th man, that crowd, because when they need it, they're there. And they managed to keep Havies at bay. Yeah, the crowd was right in the game. They, they uh, managed to influence everyone. And um, at one point, the um, referee's assistant came onto the field and said, Ref, the crowd's calling me names. Can you please make them stop? So I'm not sure if he just needs a little bit of uh, help. But there were lots of police and dogs around the, around the edge of the ground. So, um, back, But the game, as far as the game's concerned, it was pretty scrappy. Um, there was a lot of heart showing. Uh, I thought the, the body, con the contact that they were, both teams were having was a little bit too high. Um, when one team would go into a driving mall, and it's, they've sort of worked on that, that area before the game, and they've worked on that in training, they look really good. They set well and they drop down and then they drive forward. The team that's um, defending that rolling mall or driving mall, are just there. you can see their heads are up, um, they're, they're not low, they're not together, and they just get driven away. And I saw that a lot in the, with the driving malls. Mm. I also saw that a lot in the breakdowns where people were putting their bodies on the line, but they weren't at the right height. Um, and I think that's a problem in Sri Lanka. Yeah, it is uh, really a problem. Uh, but once you, as you said, uh, Paul, it was an error-strewn game. Uh, it was uh, it was close and it was intense. But the quality of the rugby wasn't mm. high. It was probably a, what you'd call an ugly win for a candy team. Yeah, it was an ugly win. Um, they managed to get away by having great um, goal line uh, defence or or try line defence. They they held out Havelock for Havelock Sports Club for a long time on defence. And then right near the end of the match, they held them out and held them out, and then they turned the ball over and scored a try. And it looked like that sort of broke the broke the hearts mm. of the, the Havelock sports team, um, because then when they broke out and they were they were still 70, 80 metres away from the try line, they broke out and Havelock's only managed to get three or four players back to cover, and um, that's unlike Havelock Sports Club. Uh, poor old Shara Fernando finding himself uh, in the sin bin once again in uh, this game. But uh, he might have considered himself a little unlucky as well because he may have been retaliating to something that happened earlier on because Soiru Anthony seemed to go after him rather aggressively, unnecessarily aggressively at the uh, breakdown and around his neck. And uh, it, was, it was a charge that probably shouldn't have happened. It wasn't safe. And then the referee referred it to the TMO as he should have done. And the TMO comes back with a no-foul play call. Do you understand that call, Paul? Uh, I didn't understand the call as such. The, um, the letter of the law from um, World Rugby says that as soon as the legs or the hips go above the 90, then that's a yellow card. It looked to me like it went above 90. It probably wasn't foul play. It was probably a bit reckless, but um, it probably could have been a yellow card. Um, there was a lot of niggle in the game. There was a lot of... Uh, they both played with a lot of heart, and so it was right on the edge the whole time. It was simmering, the crowd was in it, and so it was just about to boil over the whole game. Yeah, well, uh, that brings us to an end 
of the first round and the good thing about uh, this dialogue rugby league in 2016 is that there are no unbeaten team which means it's wide open Havis and navy have suffered a loss each uh, candy have lost twice as well but that's nothing for them because they will host uh, navy in nithavala when uh, it comes to the second round as well and uh, there's also sia who will host candy in colombo so that's going to be an interesting match as well so there's going to be a lot of ups and downs so it's going to be a very very interesting new year come this dialogue rugby a division league we'll bring you all the action on the popular.com keep sharing the passion